Hello and welcome to Sets, Games, and Guides. It's been a long time since we've seen some WoW content, so here we are. I'm not going to hold back and I'm going to jump right into it. We are going to be doing Warlock PvP specs because that's what I've been heavy into right now. We're going to start out with Affliction, which is what I did to level and a lot of what I play uh, PvP in unless I'm in arenas, and I'll talk about that more as we go on. So let's take a quick look at what we get for simply choosing Affliction, which is Unstable Affliction, a great damage over time. Uh, something important to note is you cannot have Immolate and Unstable Affliction on a target, it's one or the other. So basically you won't be casting Immolate as an Affliction Warlock. However, this does a substantial amount of damage, uh, so it's competitive if not slightly better than. Uh, and also, if it gets dispelled, then the Dispeller receives damage and is silenced for 4 seconds, which is something that makes it even more tasty in PvP. The big drawback to this is it's a dot with a cast time, but so is Immolate. So really you're not, you're not gaining anything in the cast time area, you're going to have to sit there and cast it anyway. So overall I'd say Unstable Affliction is better than Immolate, especially in a PvP sense. Uh, we also have Shadow Mastery, which is 30% increased shadow damage. All your dots, because you're not using Immolate, are classified as shadow damage. Yes, drains are still classified as dots. Keep that in mind. Uh, and finally, Potent Afflictions is our Mastery, which we receive at, I believe, it's still level 80. Uh, increases all periodic shadow damage you deal by 20%. Each point of mastery increases this by 1.63%. More damage from dots. Well, almost all your damage is going to be coming from dots anyway, so increasing that is always a good thing. Uh, so, great mastery. You really can't complain with that. Granted, it's not as flashy or exciting as, you know, reduced cast times based on more mana or something like that, but it's just straight up good. You can't complain about it. Um... So we're going to jump into where we're going to be putting our talents here. Uh, keep in mind, this is the PvP Affliction Warlock spec that I'm recommending. And again, this is simply just a recommendation. I can't stress how important it is to tailor it to your own desires and needs, because it's not going to feel right unless you yourself made it. If you disagree with something, then make it your way. This is simply me breaking it down, why I chose it my way, and why and how it works. So, without further ado, let's start putting talents in. Doom and Gloom increases crit chance of Bane of Agony and Doom. That's good. Improve Life Tap. Uh, more mana when you Life Tap. Really good. And Improve Corruption. More damage from Corruption. First row of talents in Affliction. Very, very awesome. My biggest issue, though, is life. this Improved Life Tap. Now, yes, you are going to have to life tap a bit in PvP, assuming you're surviving long enough, which, as you get gear, you will survive more. So the more mana you get per life tap is good, but honestly, I myself am getting a ridiculous amount of mana back from life tap when I don't take this talent. So, it's kind of a, if you want it, go for it. If it doesn't feel like the right spec to you, then go for it. We might end up picking it up, depending on how we have to backfill, but honestly, I'm going to say... The crit bonus on your Bane of Agony, which is what you're going to be using in PvP, uh, is just so good. When you get those crits on your dots, they're just unexpected damage that's coming out of nowhere on them, which is really cool. And then the uh, increased damage on Corruption, there's no way you can't take this, especially with what we're going to pick up in the second row, which I'll talk about in a second. Uh, next we have Jinx, which causes your Curse of Elements to basically affect everything in an AoE, and Curse of Weakness to reduce the uh, regeneration of everything that isn't mana, basically, which could be really good. But I personally almost never find time to put Curse of Weakness, and since I'm doing a lot of BGs, I am doing a little bit of Arenas, so Curse of Elements is coming into play more there. But with this spec, and you can only have one Curse on a target at a time, I'm finding myself doing Curse of Tongues or Curse of Exhaustion more in arenas and BGs. So the Curse of Elements is cool, but unless you're in like a 40-man BG where you're going to be throwing out Seed of Corruption, I'm not finding Curse of Elements being that major, uh, majorly used. And then Curse of Weakness, cool, but I'd rather just slow them and catch them and kill them instead of reduce their regen rate. Uh, I could see in a 5v5 that having more utility because it's more of a strategic situation versus where a 2v2 is just go in and bash the brains out of the other guy. So honestly, I'd say stay away from Jinx. 
Uh, next we have Soul Siphon, which increases the amount drained by Drain Life and Drain Soul by an additional 3% for each affliction on the target, up to a max of 9%, and that scales with both points, doubling to 6% and 18%. That is extremely good, because when you're not applying dots, you're going to be draining life, or draining soul depending on how low the target's health is, which I will refer to back later down the tree. Uh, the reason that's really good is because you're going to have uh, three dots on the target. You're going to have your Unstable Affliction, your Corruption, and your Bane of Agony, which is going to be 6, 12, 18%. So you're going to be getting the maximum effect bonus from Soul Siphon all the time, assuming you're doing it right. So it's, it's pointless to not get this. I mean, it's an additional 18% drain, which means it's additional 18% healed if you're draining life, or an additional 18% damage in either case. So you definitely need to take Soul Siphon. And if that still doesn't sell you on it, you get Siphon Life, which causes your Corruption to have a 50% chance to heal you for 2% of your total health each tick, which is ridiculously awesome. 2% of your total health each time Corruption ticks, Plus, you'll have dots on a minimum of two targets with this spec, uh, most likely more. You're going to be getting healed for a lot of health over time. I mean, I, I'm typically anywhere from middle to depressingly top healing if we don't have any healers in a BG. It's, it's depressing when I see that, but it lets me know, hey, my drain life is getting the best from its talents, my corruption's actually helping me out, and my death coil is rocking some beast, plus some health some health stone. Warlocks actually do a lot of self-healing if you do them right. Now we need to put one more point in somewhere in order to get to the next row. You can either take Jinx if you really think you're going to be using Curse of Weakness or Curse of Elements, but I personally am going to take Life Tap because that does help you. You spend less health to get more mana, or the same amount of health to get more mana back, and uh, mana is, or uh, health is very important in PvP as I'm sure you know, as well as mana is. Um, I know I said I'm not crazy about this, but I'm even less crazy about Jinx. Jinx is kind of like this weird talent that they shoved in the tree because they needed something. That's what I get from it. I see people taking it and it's like, hey, if it works for you, go for it. But honestly, if it's between that and Improved Life Tap, take Improved Life Tap. Next row, Curse of Exhaustion. Uh, this is part of why I don't take Jinx. Curse of Exhaustion is usually what I'm using to catch people and to keep them from running away or to get them off of me and kite. Uh, yes, Warlocks can kite even better now. I'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, basically, 30% slow on the target for 30 seconds. Easy. No problem. 40 yard range, low mana cost. It's it's a great spell all around. Uh, if you're an Affliction lock without it, I know before you could get away with it just because you did so much damage, but definitely in the Cataclysm version of PvP, this is excessively helpful in arenas and in BGs. Uh, more so in BGs, I've found, but in arenas too. Uh, when, like, a Shaman's running Ghost Wolf around pillars, or uh, Warrior's chasing you down and you need to kite him, stuff like that. Uh, next we have Improved Fear, which I... S basically, this is a requirement for a PvP spec, because if you're not fearing as a Warlock, you're doing it wrong, or you're Destro. Uh, which you can kind of get away with it, but fearing as Destro is still very helpful. Anyway, basically what this does is, when you fear someone and the fear falls off, they're slowed for 30% for 5 seconds afterwards. So basically what you could do is run up, dot a target as they're running at you, fear them, hit them with Curse of Exhaustion, then when the fear comes out, I do believe it stacks, so they're 60% slowed for 5 seconds, and then for the next 25 seconds after that, they're 30% slowed. So if you can't get away from them and start spamming the hell out of your Fell Flame, uh, yes, it's called Fell Flame, yes. If you can't spam the hell out of your Fell Flame in 25 seconds while kiting them because of your Curse of Exhaustion stacked with Improved Fear, or get another Fear off by the time they get to you because of the bonus slow, then you need to redo something about how you're playing. But Improved Fear, awesome. Stacked with Curse of Exhaustion, amazing. It's just one of those stacking things that I always talk about. And finally, we have Eradication, which when your Corruption causes uh, damage, you have a chance to increase your casting speed. Uh, some people don't take this. I understand why. It's a little questionable, but honestly, at this point in the tree, you need to spend two more points, and I, like I said, Jinx is not a good idea in my opinion. So I usually take two of three eradication and backfill later, because your casting speed now, and don't quote me on this until you check it yourself, but I do believe your casting speed increases the tick 
uh, speed of your corruption and possibly your other spells. Not only that, but faster casting speed means faster application of unstable fiction on your next target, faster casting of haunt, which means more healing for you, uh, and faster draining from your drain life and drain soul, which means more damage output plus more healing. So even if it doesn't increase the speed of your dot ticks, it's still awesome, and I'm pretty damn sure it does, especially with... Um, Dark Intent and things like that now applying, and they remove Glyph of Quick Decay, which makes me think they put the mechanic in the dot, and I'm sure they did. Anyway, moving on to the next row. Sorry if I get a little rambly here. Uh, we have Improved Howl of Terror, which reduces casting time of Howl of Terror. This makes it an instant cast at two points, which is awesome. That's a free Fear Bomb. It's the equivalent of a Psychic Scream from a Warlock, except I think it lasts a little less, unfortunately. Um, eight seconds. No, I think that's about equivalent. Um, so definitely amazing. Uh, it's it's an instant fear that isn't Death Coil. It's got a shorter cooldown than Death Coil, so that's good. And it's an AOE fear. So you end up with like a rogue and a warrior beating on you. You just pop that, get the hell out of there, and then dot both of them up, and you should be good to go to take care of them. It's pretty cool. Uh, definitely take those two points. If you don't, you're doing something wrong, in my opinion. Next we have Soul Swap, which is like the big jewel, the big gem of Affliction. I'm surprised this isn't the final talent, and a Haunt is the middle talent. Basically what this is, is it will, after you dot a target, it will peel the dots off of that target, kind of like a sticker off the sheet, and put it on another target, kind of like a sticker. So basically you peel the sticker off one guy, and put it on another. Uh, when you peel it off, you rip some skin, too, i.e. you do some damage. So basically, you steal the dots that you already placed on one guy and do some damage and throw it on another guy. I think the original concept behind this was you throw dots on someone, you burn them down, and right before they die, you do soul steal, which will kill them with the chunk damage and copy the dots before they go away, and you can instantly apply them to someone else. Uh, it's really cool. It does addition, or it does some... Uh, chunk damage when you reapply them to someone else and the dots are now on with full time, not what was remaining, which is even more awesome. Uh, the mana cost is kind of edging on a little high, but it's not that bad. Again, it's a 40 yard range. A lot of the Warlock stuff is 40 yards, which, would, which is part of what makes them good for PvP. So very tasty, very nice talent. Next we have Shadow, uh, Shadow Embrace, which causes your Shadow Bolt and Haunt to apply Shadow Embrace, increasing all Shadow Periodic damage dealt to the target by 3%, stacking, and stacks up to 3 times. So at 3 points we have a 5% uh, bonus, and that will stack to 15% if you get it. You are going to be casting Haunt a lot, and you will have chances to throw out Shadow Bolts. So this is very nice. Even at one stack, you're getting 5% additional periodic damage. That's 5% more um, healing from your drain life. That's 5% more damage on all three of your dots, which means they'll be dying faster, which means you won't die. So definitely take Shadow's Embrace. Right now, you only need two of three in there. That way you can get to the next row. Again, make remember, we always backfill. If you're familiar with these, we always backfill. Next we have Death's Embrace, which while your target is below 25% health, your Drain Life heals you for uh, more health, basically. At 3 points, it's 3% additional of your total health. Also, it increases the damage done by your Shadow Spells by 12% when your target is below 25 health. Oh, I'm sorry. The first half is when you're at or below 25, the second half is when they're at or below 25. So when you're almost dead, you're getting 3% additional total health per tick of Drain Life. When they're almost dead, you're doing 12% more damage to them. Why is that good? Hmm, let's see. You have a better chance of surviving at lower health, and you kill them faster when they're almost dead. Pretty self-explanatory. Now, that, does, that second half... That works if the dots are already on the target, they drop below 25% health, those dots that were still on them all of a sudden start ticking harder. You don't have to reapply them at under 25% health. So I would say definitely take this. I ended up sitting there getting beat on by, granted he was a Resto Shaman, but a Destro Lock in a twos, and I just spammed Drain Life, and they took forever to kill me. My partner was already dead. It was ridiculous. So that is a very awesome talent. It can save your life. It can get you back in the game when you think you're about to die. Uh, it gives you another option than just kamikaze -ing. Next, we have Nightfall, which causes your Corruption and Drain Life to give, your sh give you Shadow Trance, which is basically an instant cast Shadow Bolt. Now, at two points here, you have 4%, and then in your Glyphs, there's a Glyph 
of corruption, which gives you an additional 4% that does. So you can get an 8% chance to get an instant Shadow Bolt. Now, your Shadow Bolt does do a lot of damage, and it does stack your Shadow Embrace, which is what we picked up before. So it is very good if you can get instant cast Shadow Bolts in PvP. Plus, if you start throwing corruption on a bunch of different targets, just dotting them all up like crazy, that's going to make it proc even more, because every tick of your corruption is going to cause you to have an 8% chance. So if you have 20, you know, or let's say 10, easier. If you have 10 corruptions going on, then you're going to have each time, assuming they're taking at the same time, an 80% chance to get Nightfall to proc if you have 10 corruptions going on, which is rather hard to do unless you take a certain talent. So basically, the more corruptions you have out, the more instant Shadow Bolts you're going to have. The more instant Shadow Bolts you're going to have, the more you're going to be increasing the damage of your damage over times and doing burst chunk damage. So it's a very, very nice talent because you can't sit there and cast Shadow Bolt in PvP usually, especially in arenas because they're watching all that shit. So definitely take two there. We do unlock the next row with that, but I'm just going to quickly look at Soulburn Seed of Corruption. A new thing that came in with Kata that I'm sure most of the Warlocks are familiar with now is called Soulburn. It's with their new Soul Shard system. You burn a Soul Shard to get the Soulburn buff. Based on the next spell you cast, a certain thing is going to happen. Now, with Affliction, there's not much that Soul Burn does for you, with the exception of your Demonic Teleport, which gives you a speed boost afterwards, but that's good for everybody, and your Drain Life, which basically halves the time of Drain Life, and you still get the same amount of life, or life drained, which is cool. That's usually what you're going to be using it for, but in situations like AV, when you're turtling and you have a shit ton of Horde on the bridge at your base for Alliance, or that little choke point for Horde when they're coming up the hill, you can spam, or you can throw out Seed of Corruptions, which do a lot of AoE damage and make it hell for the healers, but not only that, you could do Seed of Corruption that's been soul burned, when that pops, everyone that gets hit by it, including the person that had Seed of Corruption, is now infected with Corruption. If you're lucky, you can get like 20 guys with this one seed. At that point, you have 20 corruptions all ticking at the same time. Remember what I said? Nightfall is going to be procking like there's no tomorrow at that point. Everyone's going to be receiving ridiculous amounts of shadow damage because of your improved corruption, assuming you have enough spell power to back it up. And the healers are just going to have to spam the hell out of their AoE heals if they want to keep everybody up. And we all know how much mana those, those damn things cost, right? It's ridiculous. So... Definitely an uh, interesting ploy if you find yourself doing, like, rated 40s, which is totally cool, or even rated 20s, stuff like that. Um, honestly, I'm kind of mixed feelings about this, because typically if I'm going to soul burn, it's to get away with demonic teleport or drain life faster. Um, I don't find myself casting Seed of Corruption that much, except in Isle of Conquest and AV. So, it's questionable. It's definitely not a bad choice. If you like the way that sounds and you use Seed of Corruption a lot, by all means, go for it. But honestly, I'm going to say kind of back away from it uh, if you're following my spec. Next, we've got Everlasting Affliction, which increases the crit chance of your Corruption, your Seed of Corruption, and your Unstable Affliction. So basically, all your dots except your Drains and your uh, uh, blech, Bane of Agony. Sorry. Basically, everything but except your Banes, and you already got a uh, damage bonus for your Drains earlier in the tree. So this is really cool, because that's, at three points, a 15% damage increase on your Corruption, which is getting a 12% from the first row talent already, I believe. Let's check, yes. So that does stack, at which point you're getting a, or you're getting 12% increased damage on a 15% increased crit chance, which is totally freaking awesome. And also on Bane of Agony, you did get an 8% crit chance in the beginning of the tree. Let's not forget that. So that's really cool. You're increasing the damage of Corruption and Unstable Affliction, which will always be on the targets that you're focusing. And if you do use Seed of Corruption, that point too. Um, but basically your Corruption and Unstable Affliction critting 15% more often is really kick-ass because that means you're going to be doing more unexpected damage um, because it's going to be critting more often. Granted, crit isn't the best thing for an Affliction Warlock, but it's never a bad thing. Uh, and then you have Drain Life, Drain Soul, and Haunt have a 100% chance to reset the duration of your Corruption spell on the target. This is pretty cool because it means you have uh, you won't have to reapply dots. If this person is living a long time because, say, they have a Discipline Priest on them and 
you you do the usual thing, which is dot them up, fear, and spam drain life, your drain life is going to keep corruption on the target, and your haunt will keep corruption on the target, so you don't have to worry about it as much. Plus, Fell Flame extends the duration of your unstable affliction by six seconds, and that doesn't stop. You can keep casting Fell Flame to refresh it. So between this talent refreshing corruption and assuming you get Fell Flames intermittently, your unstable affliction and corruption will literally never fall off the target if you're doing it right. So this talent is really kick-ass. Because the less global cooldowns you have to worry about, the better. Trust me, that's true of any class in any situation. Next we have Pandemic, which reduces the global cooldown of your Bane and Curse spells by 0.5 seconds. Speaking of global cooldowns, didn't I just mention that? So 0.5 seconds off the GCD makes it 1 second instead of 1.5 seconds, which means faster application of dots and all other kinds of goodies in there from having that extra 0.5 seconds. So definitely take that. Plus, your Drained Soul has a 100% chance to refresh the cooldown of Unstable Affliction on targets below 25% health. Typically, you're not going to be using Drain Soul unless the target is fairly low, because I believe it's underneath 25% health. Perfect timing. So, basically, you're not going to be Draining Soul on someone who isn't under 25% health, because when you Drain Soul on someone with that low health, it does ridiculous amounts of damage. It's part of the talent. And on top of that, your Unstable Affliction will now refresh because you're draining their soul as well. So you don't have to stop to cast Fell Flame to refresh your Unstable Affliction. So between these two talents, Everlasting Affliction and Pandemic, your Drain Soul will refresh your Unstable Affliction and your Corruption on the target if it's below 25% health. Plus, let's not forget Death's Embrace causes you to do 12% more damage when the target's under 25% health. So this kind of just helps you speed up killing the target, because a lot of times when they're at 25% health or lower, they're getting the shit healed out of them because they don't want to die. So it kind of helps out a lot there, plus you don't have to stop and recast the dots, with the exception of Bane of Agony which is always the problem child of an Affliction Warlock, I've found. Uh, either way, Pandemic, very good, very good. if not simply for the first half, definitely for the second half. Uh, it's also kick-ass in, like, Isle of Conquest and AV when you're trying to kill the PvE bosses shoved in there, because you can just start draining the hell out of them and you don't need to worry about anything. Finally, we get the big baddie of the tree, which is Haunt. Like I said, honestly, I think Soul Swap and Haunt should have their spots changed. But uh, Haunt is kick-ass. It's basically the Shadow Bolt of an Affliction Warlock uh, when you don't want to be casting Shadow Bolt. Unfortunately, it has a cooldown, which is a little depressing, but hey, can't complain. Um, I am Glyphed, so that might be throwing off what it's reading here. Let me check really quick. Uh, yes, it is. Um, this, this currently says, All damage done by your Shadow Damage over time effects on the target... Uh, are increased by 23%. It's actually 20% base, and there's a glyph that will increase it. Check out my Affliction Glyph video for that. But, um, basically, you hit someone with Haunt, you do some burst damage, you increase the damage of your dots on the target, and when Haunt is dispelled or ends, it returns to you, healing you for 100% of the damage it did. Now, something interesting about that is that does not mean 100% of the initial chunk damage it did. At least from what I've seen unless my spell power is, like, on crack or something. That means 100% of the damage it did and caused your dots to do additionally the 20%, because I've had this thing come back and heal me for, like, 12k, which is ridiculous. So, Haunt is really awesome. Definitely take it. Without it, you're not an Affliction Warlock, honestly. Basically, your rotation is going to be Haunt, Unstable Affliction, Corruption, Bane of Agony, if you can sit there and cast all that. And with that, they're going to be dotted up with their three dots with all the bonuses from the tree, plus Haunt, causing 20% additional damage over time from those. It's going to be ridiculous. So, obviously take this. It's good. It's got the 40-yard range that almost everything else has. The only big problem I have with this is it's got an 8-second cooldown, which is a pain in the ass. But hey, whatever. Anyway... Uh, that leaves one, two, three un uh, unfinished talents in the tree, and then we have access to Destruction and Demonology. Let's take a quick look at the other two trees before we backfill anything and pick any other talents. So we're looking at Bane here in Destruction, which reduces the cast time of Shadow Bolt, Chaos Bolt, and Immolate. Well, we don't have Chaos Bolt, and we don't use Immolate because we have Unstable Affliction, and we shouldn't be casting Shadow Bolt unless it's Instant Cast. So that's a completely useless talent for us. Next we have Shadow and Flame, which causes uh, damage done by your Shadow Bolt and Incinerate spells to increase. 
not a bad thing because we are getting instant cast Shadow Bolt. Uh, Shadow Bolt and Incinerate also have a chance to cause Shadow of Flame, which makes the target vulnerable to spell damage, uh, increasing spell crit chance by a total of 15% at 3. Not bad, but crit isn't the main focus of an Affliction Warlock. So you can take it if you like it, but honestly I'd say skip on it. There's better things you'll see. Finally, improved Immolate, not even casting it, not even going to bother reading it. Uh, improved Searing Pain, not using Searing Pain. Ember Storm reduces cast time of Soulfire and Incinerate, not using either of those two spells. And Aftermath, your Reign of Fire has a chance to stun, and we don't have Conflagrate. So, not really anything too delicious to pick up in, in, in Destruction. It's not really playing well with Affliction. They're kind of like uh, the bully and the nerd on the schoolyard. Uh, Affliction's trying to, you know, get away from him, and Destruction's like, no, I want your lunch money beat him up, you know, kind of thing. Anyway, just ignore destruction. Uh, he'll stop bullying you, Affliction. Don't worry, it's okay. Anyway, uh, Demonology, let's see. We got Demonic Embrace, which is a total of 10% increased stamina, which is delicious for PvP. It's freaking insanely amazing, especially with PvP gear, because you get so much stamina off of it. 10% on top of the ridiculous amount that it's giving you is amazing. If you're a PvP lock and you don't have it, honestly, I'm going to look at you funny. Uh, next we have Dark Arts, which reduces cast time of Imp's Firebolt, increases damage of your Felguard's Legion Strike, and increases the damage of your Fell Hunter's Shadow Bite. Here's something interesting. The Fell Hunter's Shadow Bite was changed while I was away so that it does a base shadow damage and 30% more damage for each damage over time on the target, which means it'll be doing 90% to 120% additional damage depending on whether you're draining or not on the target. So if you can increase the 120% bonus to 15% on top of that, 135%, this thing is going to be hitting harder than your Shadow Bolt every time it does Shadow Bite, which is a lot of freaking damage. And finally, we have Fell Synergy, which gives you a chance to heal your pet for some of the damage you do. Um, not a bad thing, but they already take reduced AoE damage, so it's kind of like, oh, that's cool, um, thanks, bye. You know, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, so, I am definitely going to say take Dark Arts for the 15% increase Fell Hunter Shadow Bite, and you should be using Fell Hunter or Succubus as an Affliction Warlock. Uh, Succubus is good for the CC, but honestly, the Fell Hunter is so much burst damage with that Shadow Bite. Plus, it has Spell Lock and it can eat a buff. So, there's really no reason you shouldn't be using Fell Hunter unless you need a bubble because you're a flag runner or something. But honestly, Fell Hunter, amazing. And definitely take at least two or three Demonic Embrace. You can't really get away without it. Probably going to backfill that. We do have five points left. So we have Demonic Rebirth, which when your Summon Demon dies, it respawns. It's Phoenix Heart for Warlock Pets, whatever. Uh, mana Feed, you get mana back when they crit, and your Life Tap gives your pet mana, whatever. You're going to be dying more often anyway, so it's not that big of a deal. Demonic Aegis, increases the amount of health generated through spells and effects granted by Demon Armor by... 10% total, and increase the amount of health returned by your fell armor by 100%. Basically, as an affliction lock in PvP, PvP sorry, I found that it's best to use your uh, demon armor, because the way fell armor works is it gives you a percentage back of the damage you deal. The thing about dots is, each time it ticks, it's not a lot, but over the duration, you get a lot of ticks, so it's, a f it's an extended amount of damage basically. So if you're using Fell Armor, you're going to get a lot of little heals that aren't going to be keeping you up. If you're using uh, Demon Armor, the thing is, all those little heals are now 30% better. So now they're 30% bigger heals. Plus, your Haunt is going to be receiving increased healing from this. Um, your Drain Life is going to be receiving increased healing from this. And maybe even your Siphon Life talent will be getting more from this. So definitely take Demonic Aegis for 10% more from your Demon Armor, which makes that a total of 30%. And finally, in Destruction, we have Master Summoner, which reduces casting time of summoning and reduces mana cost. No big deal, especially when you Soul Burn Summon, it's instant cast anyway, so I wouldn't take Master Summoner. Uh, especially as an Affliction Lock in PvP, which leaves three points left, and conveniently enough, we have three uncapped talents. Hmm. Oh, four, I'm sorry, if you look at Demonic Embrace. Uh, and you know my opinion on Improved Life Tap. The only reason we took one of two in there is because we had to. So I would say definitely take Shadow's Embrace to get that up to 5%. That way, even if it's just one stack on the target, it's the maximum you can get from that one stack. Very optimal. 
Uh, also, I would say take eradication to increase your casting speed because faster draining means more health back and etc. I've already talked to you about it. Uh, it means you can apply unstable affliction faster and cast haunt faster. Faster you can cast haunt, the faster you get that burst of healing back too. And finally, definitely take Demonic Embrace for 10% increased stamina, because in PvP gear, you have crap tons of stamina. 10% on top of crap tons is 110% of crap ton. Yes, that is logical math. Anyway, uh, we also have one of two in life tap. It's not that big of a deal. 10% is not is pretty good. Uh, but the 20% isn't going to make that big of a difference. Keep in mind, in PvP, you do die. Let's all face it. Everybody dies at some point in PvP. There's no way to have a zero death record. So, in a BG, if you're low on mana, and you really, really don't want a life tap, you're probably going to get your ass killed anyway. So don't worry about it. Um, yeah. So, this has been Affliction PvP spec with, uh, Seth. That's uh, 3380. This has been Cethaldor from the Guild Sacrilege on the server Blade's Edge. Thank you for listening. Again, I'm going to remind you, please take this with a grain of salt. This has only been a suggestion, something that I found that works out really, really well. Uh, if you see me as Affliction in my, in my GG Files videos, this is going to be the spec I'm running with. Uh, unless I say otherwise, which I might forget to do, so. But most likely, this will be the spec I'm running. Plus, if you're interested in current spec that I'm running, by all means, check me out on the WoW, uh, new WoW Armory thingy. It's kind of weird and different, but hey, you can make it work. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching. This has been Seth, and uh, it was really fun to make this for you. We'll have some more WoW videos out soon.